once upon a time, monsters were make-believe. They were found by a boy named Max who didn't want to eat his dinner, so he climbed out his bedroom window and he found them on a sailing boat far away. And when he found them, he stamped his feet until they crowned him king and they cried when he had to go back home again. But monsters aren't make-believe. Sometimes monsters kiss you on the forehead after they've said a bedtime story. I think I know they'd always been there lurking, but the first time I remember them, they were heralded by a policeman and my 10-year-old brother. Then, a boy's fortress is his father's favorite armchair in the corner of the room. He still remembers what terror looks like. It tastes acidic. It stenches brute aftershave and freshly mown grass. It has a brown leather belt tongue that licks, licks, licks my brother's skin. Monsters say this is discipline designed to avoid more monsters. Policeman agrees. We say nothing. We just take our smiles off the hook from behind the door on the way out to church. Two photographs of fellow fields of memory. Family portrait, 1991. Teeth together in smiles like taxidermied sheep. 1993, a swing on the Maruchi River. Wider monochrome memories wear brown shorts and a Humphrey B. Bear shirt. There is a game we play where we tell ourselves it wasn't that bad and we try not to blink. But scars run deeper than denial in this family. Three, we are a traveling circus. I'm a contortionist. My body can twist into shapes inside of itself and retwist and retwist and retwist and retwist until I'm around spring. I carry the smallest box I can find so that at any moment I can crawl inside. I tell myself that when the air runs out, I will scratch my way out, but I have no fingernails left. My family are a traveling circus. My brother is a magician. His greatest trick is to disappear and never return. Some four-letter words are heard often in our house, but it sounds like they're spelt wrong. We hear love spelt F-E-A-R. When I was five in preschool, they told me that white is not a color. It is just a trick of the light. It is the absence of shade. It holds no hue. It just happens to be the background to our bruises. Six-year-old me is scared of poetry because that is where the monsters live. At my grandmother's house, there is a cast iron bed. Below this bed, there is a gap, just below the mattress where the bed frame curves back in on itself to create a space just big enough for a small, thin boy to fit inside. Because boys know monsters don't live under beds, and if they are lucky enough, they don't look under beds either. Where do monsters come from? Can I cut them out of myself like paper chain people? Pretend that when I meet someone, that person's shy shape left in my skin was meant for them. Nine, when monsters slumber, laughter is a tripwire that triggers tears and terror, and then there is an eerie silence at the end of a maelstrom. It is the sound in which we pray that this time it is an armistice and not just the eye of another ceasefire. It is a silence where we hear the sounds of our other comrades left to fend for themselves on the battlefield. Our commanders have ordered our retreat. Defeated, we slink away. We would write home to our mothers for comfort, but there doesn't seem to be much point. We dream of insurgencies, maybe a mutiny, where we cast our commanders adrift, but we have no leaders left. Now desertion is my only option. I pull the white flag over my scars and hope that it doesn't slip on my way to the border. I seek asylum in my lover's bedroom. 10, trauma is a full-bodied Japanese tattoo. 
done Taburi style, hand carved. It's the kind I can cover with collar and cuff. And when it is done, when the last mark is made, when time has taken my monster's teeth like trophies to hang its round its neck, I crawl over those scars like rubble from a cyclone searching for survivors and it takes time because I have trivialized my trauma for so long and so often I almost stop searching. But scar tissue is not meant to be measured against somebody else's scar tissue. Scar tissue is meant to be mended and mending takes time and mending is messy and mending doesn't give a shit about your toxic masculinity. So I will mend slowly and I will mend consciously and I will mend it openly in front of my 10 year old son so that hopefully he can still believe that monsters I just make believe. <laughs>